Hey there, welcome to Jumpstart University. Dominique here with another video to help you become a successful financial professional. So if you're a career changer or an aspiring financial professional, be sure to stay tuned as we talk about how to tackle CFP exam questions. By the way, if you're searching for a community of like-minded individuals that are poised to make an impact on the financial services industry, you're going to want to visit jumpstartcoachinglab.com to learn more about all that we're doing to help you make the leap into this great profession. And if you're not subscribed to the best channel on the internet to help you learn about everything that there is about this industry, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button. Okay, let's talk about CFP exam. The CFP certification examination covers six major topic areas, including financial planning, the financial planning process rather, risk management and insurance, employee benefits, investments, tax planning and management, and retirement planning. I know that's a lot. The exam is comprised of about 170 multiple choice questions included in their principal knowledge topics. You can get all this online at cfp.net. And you're gonna be answering three different types of questions typically. The standalone question, the short scenarios, and then case studies. So that's the exam. More about that later, probably in a separate video. Leave some stuff down in the comments. Let me know if you wanna go through that kind of stuff. But today, we're gonna talk about breaking down these exam questions. So. I wanna dissect a couple of sample questions from the CFP board's website to show you what they're testing for and how to best answer these questions, okay? Now, since this exam is constructed for people with three to five years of experience, uh, I'm hoping that what this video is gonna do is for those that have been studying this material and just going through it, I'm hoping that my fusion of real life experience together will provide some additional context for you. So if this is your first time seeing this material, don't worry, we're gonna take it one step at a time, okay? Let's get started. Okay, so here we are at the CFP board's website and where I am, let's just move this down a little bit so you can see. So, you know, home, get certified, certification process, exam, about the exam, exam format. Now, when you're on this page, if you scroll down, you will see that there is there are 10 sample questions and that's where we're going to go right there. Okay. So we'll go into there and you're going to have to accept this disclaimer and acknowledgement. Feel free to read that and we can go next. Let's, um, and before we get there, what I would like to do is I would like to kind of give you an acronym that I thought was particularly helpful for me when I was using this uh, or when I was taking the exam. So I like to look at like this, read. I know that makes like probably zero sense to you. Of course, read the exam, right? Yeah, read the exam question, Dominic, I totally get it. But read, recall, that's what the R stands for. Recall the information being asked. You're gonna read to understand what is being asked. You have to know what is being asked at first, okay? Then E, evaluate the data being given. Don't make any extra assumptions. Just take what they have in the question. Apply. Apply the concepts to the question at hand. You gotta use what you have available, whether that's the formula sheet or whatever. There's stuff inside the stem of the question that they're giving you. And then D, decide on the best answer. Okay, so based on that, we're gonna read the question and we're gonna highlight some things and we're gonna go through the possible solutions. So, Harold and Mary Ann Miller are a married couple in their early 40s with three children, ages 7, 10, and 12. I think that's important. Um, Harold earns $350,000 per year as a general counsel of a mid-sized IT firm, and Mary Ann is a homemaker, okay? So, they have major assets of 1.5 million cash and 1 million in stock options. They have done no estate planning. I think that's important. We'll mark that. Harold has life insurance of two times his, sa his salary from his employer. Harold plans on working full-time until age 62. Harold has the potential to receive more options and restricted stock based on company performance, but has requested that this not be included in his assets for now, given their uncertainty. College planning is of great concern to the Millers. Currently, they have no plan in place. I think that's important also. They estimate that they will need $150,000 for each child in current dollars to fund their education. Also important. The Millers have constructed a, biller, uh, a budget rather, and have determined that their household expenses are currently $12,000 per month. After tax, assume that the Millers are in the 35% federal tax bracket and 6% state tax bracket. Okay, so we got two, uh, we got this scenario here and we got two questions and we need to find out from the information that they gave there, which is probably way too much as they usually do, um, what is the most important things to answer these questions? So let's start with number one. The Millers, 
would like to set aside money to cover all of the required funding for their children's education. They are not confident that children would be able to handle money by age 21. Which of the following is most appropriate for the Millers? Okay, so I'm going to pause right here. You think about this question. And we'll play a little Jeopardy music or something like that, and then we'll come back and break it down. Now, the Millers would like to set aside uh, this money to cover all their education. So let's let's kind of break down these answers. What we do need to know is what all these accounts do. Now, the, the UTMEA is going to be an issue with custody because at age 21, when they each reach the age of majority, the Millers, the parents, are no longer, no longer have um, control over these accounts. And if they are worried about their children not being able to handle money at age 21, that is an automatic no, okay? Coverdell Education Savings Account, also known as the Educational IRA, has contribution limits. And if we got $150,000 per child, that's $450,000. I don't remember the contribution limits, but they're not that high. Uh, so that is probably one thing to note that that's probably gonna be off the table. Uh, the last two here. So these are probably the best answers Let's kind of discern between the, like, if you couldn't, if you didn't really know about those, you at least you got a 50-50 chance, but let's kind of break this down a little bit more. The 529 is probably going to be the most, uh, the qualified savings plan is going to be the most broad, covering not just tuition, but other expenses also. So that would be my choice. The D is only, is going to allow you the same contribution limits, so you can get all the money in, but it's just going to be tuition. So it won't be, you know, any other stuff like, you know, room and board, and if they need other things that fall into the, the scope of um, them going to college. So I would select C. That would be my answer. Okay. Let's go ahead and do number two, too, because I think the way to do this is if I show solutions, it's going to show all of them. Okay. So let's get to number two. Given the facts above, what is the most important piece? So given the facts above of question number one and the scenario that we'll be given. Okay. So keep that in mind. What is the most important piece of the plan that the Millers should implement first? Okay, so think about your best answer and we'll play a little Jeopardy music again and then we'll break down the, uh, the different choices here. All right, real quick Jeopardy music, okay. Um, Establish wills and guardianship. Let's revisit that. I think that's a really good answer. You know, just a, just glancing over all of these, that would probably be my best answer. Okay. Exercise stock options. Stock options. Uh, not so much. He's already uncertain about what they would be. They've got plenty of liquidity. There's really no reason to do that. So that's off the table. Diversify cash investments. That could be something that they need to do. Is it primary though? Because we've already kind of established what is the greatest concern, college planning. So it's not diversifying their, their investments necessarily. So this might be something that comes down the line, but not necessarily right now. So I would take that off the table also. Establish an irrevocable life insurance trust, an islet. Islets are primarily going to be used for estate planning purposes, which is also something that they said. They've done no estate planning, and maybe that comes later. However, knowing the current exemptions in 2022 when this video was done, they got plenty of exemption before they have to worry about estate tax, right? So that's off the table also. So I'm going to say A is going to be the best thing because if you establish a will with guardianship, what you're going to have is if something happened to them before these kids got mature enough to handle this wealth, then they would have somebody that was making these decisions for them, making sure that the, the Miller's wishes, you know, Marianne and Har Harold were carried out, especially when it comes to the number one priority of what? college planning. Okay. So in the scope of everything that we've talked about, I think those are the best answers. So let's look at the solutions. All right. So we got number, we got number one, right. And for a lot of the reasons that we said, the rationale says five, two, nine plans allows for the family to save for all qualified costs, not just tuition. Like we mentioned, UTMA account causes loss of control at the age of majority. Like we also mentioned the education IRA or the Coverdale would not be able to fully fund education contribution limits. So I couldn't remember the limits, but I just knew that there were some. And so, 
you know, when you're when you can't remember stuff like that, you haven't written it down on the formula, you just think about, okay, 529, I know you can have higher limits, Coverdale, lower limits. So if they want to save a lot for college, it's probably gonna be the 529 and not the Coverdale, okay? And then prepaid tuition plan only covers tuition. So like we said, okay, let's move on to number two. That is also correct. Given the fact that they have done no estate planning and are concerned about what would happen to their children, this should be addressed first, okay? Um, B and C are also important, but should be done afterwards. See, so, so like we said, these are not immediate priorities. It, it, at least the client dictates what the immediate priorities are, by the way, not the rubric that you've learned or will learn in the financial planning process. The client's gonna come to you with their customized needs and that's what you need to build the plan around. So this question really focuses on that and I like that because that's real life planning. Um, there are no facts in the case that justify D as an immediate need. So there we go. All right, so let's um, give you some final thoughts and uh, hopefully you enjoyed that. All right, now hopefully that was helpful for you. Just remember the acronym READ, okay? Recall the information being asked. Evaluate the data being given, apply the concepts to the question at hand, and then decide on the best answer, okay? Now, I know this could be tough, especially if it's more than your first time doing it, second, third time, but remember, follow your review program. There's a reason that these review programs work. Uh, I, I will say that without my review program, I probably would not have passed the first uh, attempt on the exam, but do exactly what they say, okay? The discipline of this is going to is going to be, I don't know, it's going to be revolutionary for you because you'll be able to pass the exam. Now, if you enjoyed this, I'm going to be doing something very similar with a colleague of mine, Mr. Gary O. Clement, who's been teaching the CFP review for nearly 15 years. And I'm going to tell you, I really consider Gary the, the GOAT, the greatest of all time for this stuff. And he and I, like I said, will be doing something very similar at the first annual Jumpstart Community Day of Gratitude on November 5th. So for details on that, look down in the description for the registration. You have to register, although it's free. Uh, or you can just join the mailing list for the things that will be coming out to promote the event. Okay, so just go to www.jumpstartcoachinglab.com slash newsletter. You can do either one of those things and they'll both get you there, okay? Now, if you found this video helpful, hit that like button and share it with all your friends, all the people that you're studying for the exam with, your study buddies. Make sure that they know that this uh, video exists, okay? I'll see you later, my friend. Bye-bye.